All right, guys, my name is Lagardi Terman Fills, and I am a proud member here at JJ Hat Center. We are the oldest hat shop in New York. We have been around since 1911, and we are still kicking. So today, we're coming in so I can give you guys a brief look into the, um, a slight history of hats, but the more importantly, the history of hats in movies and overall media and the impact that they've had on hat culture as well as, um, as, you know, as well as overall fashion in general. Uh, for a long time uh, in, you know, in the States here and around the world, hats were a major thing. And for a while, the hat industry was booming. And then suddenly there was a bit of a decline in the hat industry. You know, a lot of our iconic movie stars, a lot of our iconic TV shows, a lot of our iconic, you know, people in the media, people who have influences in fashion, they continue the hat trend. They continue to wear hats. I would say that uh, people nowadays, uh, if you're really like doing your thing with the hat, I guess you could, could be considered a bit more eccentric. A lot of people, they, they think that you need an occasion to do something and to wear something like a fedora when you really don't. One of the most iconic hat wearers in the entire game, for me personally, is uh, Mr. Indiana Jones because he's just he's 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 cool. He's just you know when he, you know, he takes his hat, he snaps the brim of his hat, you know, and he kind of gives you the urge to put on a hat. Another um, iconic hat wearer was uh, Zorro. Uh, and, I, you know, I'm mentioning a lot of the heroic hat wearers because they're the ones that made it look good, man. You know, when you saw him in his black flat brim hat, that's what did it for me. And then you have uh, other iconic characters like um, all the characters in Casablanca, you know, everybody in that movie, you know, in that time period, they were, you know, they were snazzy, they wore their hats. Everybody looked really, really good. Or even um, something a little wackier, right, since I am wearing a yellow hat, right, you got to think about characters like Jim Carrey in The Mask. You know what I'm saying? That first scene when he pops out with the yellow suit and the green face and the big wide brim, you're just like, damn, this guy, this guy's really cool. You know, so um, a lot of those influences continued the trend. So the Stetson pieces all, all across the board are an iconic American brand. Um, it's a lifestyle brand. So anybody who kind of wants to imitate you know, the art would, would gravitate towards that. Uh, a lot of the Western movies that were coming out, they made those hats famous. You know, everybody wanted to be a cowboy, the lone wolf, the, you know, you wear your hat really, really low and you only, you know, you have the toothpick to the side, so you kind of, you imitate, you imitate the art, you know, you imitate uh, what's really going on in these movies and it's like, yeah, you may not be, you know, a gun-toting outlaw of the West, but you can carry that essence by um, using the hat as the embodiment of that. The boulder, for instance, I know is um, very iconic because a lot of the movies that anybody is getting dressed formally in, they would commonly wear a, 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 a bowler or a derby because those were the hats that symbolize, you know, prestige, that symbolize being well-dressed. That's the easiest way, in my opinion, to show prestige, to show class, is to not only have a well-dressed gentleman, in, in, you know, uh, for instance, but have a well-dressed gentleman with a hat. The reason there's a common association is because the Borsellino brand is is from Italy. So a lot of the you know a lot of the culture from you know the, a lot of Italian culture came here into the states. The, the style came along with it, and Borsellino just happened to be the best of the best. That's that's the you know that for a long time they were the creme de la creme of hats. So if you are making a little bit more money than the average bear and you want to show your status. In a simple yet effective way, you would get yourself a Borsellino hat. So all the bosses had Borsellino hats. All the underbosses had Borsellino hats because it was simply the best. Granted, if it was any other brand, 
and they identified it as the best, they would wear it either way. Some of the hats, in essence, that were commonly associated with like criminal wear would be, to be honest with you, your standard fedora, your standard small brim fedora would be the most commonly, would be the most common associated with that, you know, that aspect of, of, of the time. And then the other part too is like, oftentimes when it's like that, it's usually a generic hat. If you think about this, right? If you're going to do something that you don't want anybody catching you doing, the last thing you want to do is to be walking around with a unique piece of clothing that's going to identify you. It would be the most common worn hat of the time. While I've been here, I've seen a plethora of different celebrities and, you know, Cedric the Entertainer. Uh, Steven Spielberg is a frequent flyer for us. So every so often he comes in, he gets a bunch of hats and very, very beautiful man to work with. Um, the, the funny story is when he first came in, I didn't know who I was working with. I thought I was just working with a nice old man. Turns out it was Steven, you know, Steven Spielberg. My God. Um, we've seen Michael Jordan. We've seen Andre 3000. We've seen, we get, it's the list goes on. Celebrities have a wider range than the average, you know, the working person can. So they're a little more point and shoot with their selection than somebody just coming in for one hat. You know, they can get any hat they want. So it's usually something that's a bit more eccentric, something that stands out. You know, you don't want to look like anybody else. You don't want to have something that somebody else has. So that's how they shop, in my opinion. Um, they, they, they're very point and shoot. They like it, they buy it. What we would like to do here at JJ Hats is to kind of bring a, an overall awareness to the hat world and everything that you know we do here. It's an art form. I feel like media and movies are the are the primary influencers of this. It's like I think the next time hats come into you know fashion in high demand, it's going to be because somebody really really famous wore something really really nice, and everybody wants to be like them. So um, this is our this is our goal here is to make sure that people know that we're here, you know, or even better that they don't think that they need an occasion to wear a nice hat. It's the biggest misconception. You wear a nice hat to anywhere you go and make the occasion yours. <laughs>